Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'll be talking about the first 10 things that you should definitely do on your OnePlus 7 Pro. So guys, here's my phone. This is a base variant in the grey color. And so the first thing to do is to set up a fingerprint scanner or the face and lock data. So first I'm going to set up the fingerprint scanner. To do that, you need to go to settings, then select security, then select fingerprint. Now just proceed. Now this phone comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner and the position of the in-display fingerprint scanner is over here. So now you just need to place your finger over there. This phone actually has a fingerprint scanner behind the display itself. And this is the exact place that you should place your finger. Whenever you place your finger over here, it brightens up to see exactly how your fingerprint looks like and then scans it. It might take a bit longer than your regular fingerprint scanner. So just go on with it. And now it's done. If you want to add additional fingerprints, you can do it from here. It's usually preferred to have two fingerprints, one index and one thumb. So now it's done. Now in the fingerprint settings, make sure you enable these two toggles or just leave it on. It's on by default. So when you lock your phone, you'll see a completely empty screen. This phone doesn't have always on display, so it will not show you the fingerprint scanner location all the time. So once you touch the display, it will show you the fingerprint scanner location. Now you can place your finger to unlock the phone. Now that only works if you have this particular toggle enabled. Now if you have this particular toggle enabled, whenever your phone is just lying on a table, you can pick it up and you can see the ambient display. Once again, see the fingerprint scanner's location and then place your finger to unlock the phone. So definitely make sure these two options are enabled. Now if you don't like the fingerprint animation, you can also change it from here. So you have all these different animations. You can choose the one that you like. For now, I'll just go with this one. And here's a preview. It's pretty fast. You can't even see the animation, but it did change. Next to add facial data, you need to go to face and lock and then into your password. And now add face data. And it's pretty straightforward. Just look at the camera and that's it. Now it's done. Now, while you're setting up face and lock, you get two options. If you want to unlock by swiping up the lock screen, or if you want to use face and lock every time your display lights up, I prefer the second option. And here's a quick preview. So whenever your phone is locked, you can simply press the power button to wake it up and front camera pops up, sees your face and unlocks the phone. You can also use gestures like double tap to wake and even that works. Now, for some reason, if you don't like that setup, you can change it from here. You can choose to go with swipe up to unlock. Now, once that is done in the lock screen, you can swipe up and the front camera pops up, sees your face and unlocks the phone. So that was face and lock. If you're someone who frequently uses your phone to check the time, you just want to check your notifications, then leaving it to the first option. That's this. Then swipe up to unlock makes more sense. Now the next thing to do is to choose your navigation bar. Now this phone comes with this three button navigation bar that we've been seeing for a very long time, but you do get other options. Now, if you really want to stick with this navigation bar, you get some additional options. So for that, go to buttons and gestures. Now select navigation bar. Now, if you don't like the layout of these buttons, like if you want the back button on the right side, you need to go to the first option, navigation bar customization and enable swap buttons. Once you do that, back button and the recent apps button is swapped. You also get to hide the navigation bar. So if you enable this toggle, you'll see a dot on the left side. If you click it, navigation bar will hide automatically when you open any application. So if you want to use the navigation bar, you can swipe up once to pull up the navigation bar and click the button. Whenever you open any application, navigation bar automatically hides. But when you go to the home screen, it's always visible. Now going back to settings, just for some time, if you don't want the navigation bar to hide, you can click the button again and it'll stick. Now on most phones, you can simply press and hold the recent apps button to open split screen mode. But as you can see, that doesn't work on this phone. So to make that work, come to the same page then click long press action for recent button, select open close split screen. And then whenever you press and hold the recent apps button, it will start split screen mode. So this is something I would definitely recommend you to do. You also get other options. So definitely give them a try. Now, if you want to try the Android Pi based navigation bar with two buttons, you can also do it from here. Now this is the Android Pi based navigation bar. You just get the back and home button. And for recent apps, you can swipe on the home button. And these are your recent apps. Now you can also swipe the home button right side to switch between applications. Personally, I really like the concept, but it doesn't work well on other phones, especially non-pixel phones. So you can definitely give it a try if you really want it. 
Now while you're using this navigation bar to open split screen mode, you need to first go to the recent tabs page and then click the button over here and then you can use split screen mode. Now the final option is to use the navigation gestures and that's probably the best way to use this phone. You'll have a much more immersive experience and now to go back you can swipe on the right side or the left side to go back a step. You can swipe on the center to go home. You can swipe and hold for recent apps. So these are your recent applications. Now once again if you want to open any application in split screen mode you can do the same. Just click this button over here and then select split screen. Now while you're using these gestures to switch between your present and previous application, you can also do this. Just like the latest iOS. Now as you can see there is no home button and you might wonder how to trigger Google Assistant. So for that you need to once again go to buttons and gestures and enable this toggle. Quick activate the assistant app. Once you do that, you can click the power button for like half a second to trigger Google Assistant. How is the weather? Right now in Hyderabad so it's 30. Now if you press and hold the power button for like 3 seconds, you will get the power menu. There you go. Now these few settings that I have shown are the most important things that you should definitely do. And the next thing is to enable dark mode, which is a personal preference. So in display settings you get 3 theme options. The first one is colorful, which simply adds a bit of color, not that appealing. Next is a light color, which you have seen so far. And the final one is the dark theme, which is my personal favorite. It basically changes the UI elements to help save some battery. It even strains your eyes less at night and it even looks pretty cool. If you want, you can also change the accent colors to all these colors. Personally, I like the blue, so I'll just stick with that. Now the next thing to do is to turn on the ambient display. Now this phone doesn't have an LED notification light or even always on display. So if you want your phone to light up every time you get a notification, you can do that from the display settings. By the way, that feature is ambient display and you can tweak the settings from here. So just for a quick preview, this is ambient display and you can configure how the ambient display should respond from these settings. So if you enable this particular toggle, ambient display is shown every time you pick up your phone. Like it's on a flat surface, you pick it up and you see the ambient display. In the same way, if you enable this particular toggle, it will show ambient display every time you touch the screen. That's when your phone is locked, you can touch the screen to see the ambient display. Now if this toggle is enabled, you'll see ambient display every time you get a notification. Now this is the current clock style and if you don't like it, you can change it from here. Select clock style and you have all these different clock styles. I'll go with this one. And there we go. Now going on next, this phone also has some pretty cool gestures that you should definitely try. So to use that, you need to go to settings, then select buttons and gestures once again, then select quick gestures. So out of them all, you have three finger screenshot. So every time you want to take a screenshot, simply swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Now, if you want to take a longer screenshot, first take a regular screenshot and then click this button. Expand screenshot and then your phone will scroll automatically and give you a longer screenshot. Now on this phone, my favorite gestures would be double tap to wake, music controls, draw O to open the camera application. This is something we have to set it up. Next, draw V to toggle the flash, turn on or turn off the flashlight. So here's a quick preview for double tap to wake. Whenever your phone is locked, you can double tap the screen to wake it up. Now, if you're using face unlock, you can simply double tap the screen and swipe up and face unlock works. Next, we have music controls where we can swipe greater than or less than or even draw two lines to play or pause music. Right now, I don't have any media player installed, so it's not working. Anyway, next we have draw O to open camera. So this is another nice shortcut. Simply draw O to open the camera application. Firstly, my favorite gesture is draw V to toggle the flash. So whenever we draw V, we get the flash and we can draw V again to turn it off. There you go. So these are some gestures that you should definitely give a try. Now going on next, if you want to display battery percentage and network usage on the status bar, this is what you need to do. Go to display settings, then select status bar. Then enable this toggle show battery percentage to display battery percentage on the status bar. Now, if you enable this particular toggle, you can see the network usage on the status bar. There you go. Now, OnePlus is one of the few phones that gives you the option to hide or show icons on the status bar. Let's say if you don't want to see this NFC icon on the status bar, you just need to go to the settings page and disable the NFC and that icon is disabled. Now, going on next, in the display settings, you are given the option to change the resolution as well. This is the first OnePlus phone to come with a Quad HD Plus display. By default, it is set to auto switch. 
Now, depending upon your usage, whether you're playing a game or just making a call, if your phone is set to auto switch, your phone will change the resolution automatically to help save some battery. But if you want the best resolution and want to use your phone always at Quad HD Plus resolution, select the second option. In the same way, if you want to save some battery, then you can always switch to Full HD resolution. Now this is manual switching and personally I leave it to auto switch and hope it works. It probably should work. Now this is also one of the first OnePlus phones to come with a 90Hz AMOLED display. Now by default it is set to 90Hz, you can check it from here, screen refresh rate. And that definitely gives you a much more smoother experience, like all the animations are much more fluid, but at a cost of some battery life. So for some reason if you don't want that, you want a regular 60Hz display, you can switch it from here. Personally, I really like the 90Hz display, it does make a difference, so I'll suggest you to stick with 90Hz. Now the next most important thing to do is to lock applications on your phone. Now to lock applications, you need to go to settings, then select utility, then select app locker. Now enter your password and now you can lock applications. Normally I prefer to lock settings, play store and gallery applications but on this phone we can't lock the setting apps itself. So we are just going to do with that. And every time anyone tries to open play store or your gallery application, they will be asked for the password. You can either enter the password or your fingerprint. Now the next time you try to open the application it will immediately unlock. But if you try to lock your phone and then try to open a locked application, it will ask you for the password. Now I'm going to use the fingerprint and it does work. So in this way we can lock applications and I would definitely suggest you to lock all the applications that have sensitive information, net banking apps, gallery apps and even social media applications. So guys those are the first 10 things that you should definitely do on your OnePlus 7 Pro. So guys that's pretty much it for this video, thanks for watching, if I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. By the way, if you're planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off, have a nice day.